Ken Dryden is here on the Rich Eisen Show. What's up, Ken? Well, it's good to be on with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> you know, Ken Dryden, I always said, should have been the Prime Minister of Canada. And I mean that. What, whatever happened, you went into politics, then you went into hockey again. I mean, why? Why are you? Why, why are you not? Why are you not Trudeau right now? I, I don't no, understand. It was the other way around. I was in in hockey again, and then I was in politics, and I, I ran for the leadership, but I lost. So. Hey Ken, is it true that the day before the Miracle on Ice game, you you took the bar exam? Is that a true story, Ken? Um, it was certainly right around that time, and it probably was the case. I mean, I was taking uh, the bar course in Ottawa. And uh, I had to get back to Ottawa to do it. And then happily, Ottawa isn't that far from Lake Placid, but it's certainly a car ride. It's not a plane ride. And uh, got back for the game. I, I like the way Ken says it's, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't that far. It was, what, about a five-hour drive, right? you got to go out through <laughs> Buffalo, past Toronto, am I correct? Or no, I guess you didn't go that far. And also, it, yeah. it was. We, we had done the West Germany game mm -hmm. on Wednesday night, and Ken got in the car. And in, in case you forgot, Ken, I know that, you know, a lot of stuff has slipped from your memory bank, <laughs> but, but let, let me fill you in. You, you went to Ottawa, you passed the bar with flying colors, you came back to Lake Placid, and then Friday was the U.S.-Soviet game. Mm, unbelievable. Well, it was, uh, I mean, the, the whole time was so filled with energy. I mean, just being in, in Lake Placid and then with the U.S. team doing what they were doing, that, that you didn't need sleep. And uh, and so you know, going and doing an, an exam, no big deal. Get back and you get back into that environment again, and you're just all pumped all over again. Well, I mean, obviously you were in the midst of uh, an incredible uh, run yourself. Um, obviously playing hockey in the Canadians, you you were finished with them in 1979. When you were reached out to for this, Ken, uh, just hooked up with Al Michaels, what was going through your mind at that time? Well, um, I mean, first of all, just, just doing the Olympics. And, and I didn't know it was going to be Al uh, at first. Um, but doing the Olympics, it was just going to be exciting. And, and I mean, I'm like Al and you, I'm sure. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're sports fans, and we've been sports fans all of our lives. And so the Olympics was always a big deal, even if our sports weren't really often Olympic sports. And so I was, I was excited about that. Um, and then sometime during the year, um, I, you know, I found out that I'd be working with Al. And I have to tell a story about Ken and I first met in December of 1979. And we met in Moscow because there was a tournament called the Izvestia <clears throat> Tournament named after a, a local newspaper. And that tournament featured all of the Olympic teams apart from the U.S. So you had Czechoslovakia. Yeah. You had the Soviets, you had Finland, Sweden, Canada. And so Ken and I met in the hotel the night before we went out. We were able to see like 12 games in four days to get familiar with the teams. And I remember sitting there at dinner with Ken, and they cleared the table, and we started to talk about, you know, international hockey versus the National Hockey League. And I, you know, wasn't well-versed in international hockey, and Ken gave me a brilliant, like, eight or nine minute dissertation about you know what it is and the geometry of it and the wider rink and how it's played and how it differs from the NHL and then he said to me uh, do you think this is the type of thing that the audience would be interested in and I said yes I do but let me let me teach you something about the world of television can you get that down to eight seconds <laughs> do you remember that Ken I do remember. Mm. So no. six-time Stanley Cup champion for you, Ken, and mm. obviously uh, Hall of Fame, et cetera, et cetera. Where, where did this experience rank for you? Yeah. Well, that's a very interesting question, and, and, and I wouldn't have predicted the answer um, until actually it was over. And uh, I, as you said, I, I retired in 79, and, uh, and so... And, and so in the in the in the Olympic year, I mean, we were we were about as close to the U.S. team as anybody was who wasn't a player or coach on the team. So we got to know them well. We you know felt for them all the way through. You know, rode the, their crest during the games, um, and then finally, you know, the it's over and they win the gold medal. And I can I can remember 
after the Finland game, which was the gold medal game, when, when it was over, and, and seeing the excitement of the U.S. players and feeling the excitement, and then about 20 seconds later, kind of feeling, a, it was, there was sort of a hollow feeling, and I realized that as close as I had been to this team in winning a championship, it wasn't like winning a championship on the ice. And that, and that I would never have that feeling of winning a championship on the ice again. And it was just that much different. So I loved doing it. Uh, it, was, it was a terrific experience in all the ways you can imagine. But it was also, um, you know, kind of a, a, a melancholy moment as well. Wow. Well, that, that's, that's, you know, so perfectly put because, you know, I think of people who get into broadcasting – and who have had, you know, wonderful careers either as players or as coaches. And it's pretty much, it's the same thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's one thing to broadcast the game. It's another to have played in it or coached in it. And I know a lot of coaches, that's why I think a lot of coaches have left the sidelines yeah. and they go into broadcasting, yeah. but then they wind up going back again. Yeah. Because you cannot recreate that feeling. Yeah. No, that's right. I mean, there's there's a certain, you know, that you, you when you go up to the broadcast booth, you think that you're there's a kind of a freedom now. You can watch the game, enjoy the game. You're not under the same kind of you know, pressure. You're not getting the kind of abuse that you are when you're playing. And then when you get up there, you realize that it's all of those things that really made the experience so intense. That that's what you end up, you know, that's what you end up missing, and and uh, so you know it was true. And, and and Al and I and I really hate to say nice things about Al because <laughs> I know you do. Our, our relationship is such that we don't we try not to do it. But Al was 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 exactly the perfect guy to work with. I mean that that he he was a you know he was um, um, uh, you know a, a guy who had experience in a lot of sports. He wasn't the the main uh, announcer that time for ABC in the games, or or he wouldn't have been doing hockey. But he knew sports, and so he knew hockey. And and all that Al needed was a little bit of confidence um, in terms of his ability to do hockey games. And all that I was I, I was there. I think almost like a goalie is on a team that you're there to just give. A, you know, a, a sense of support and confidence to the defense and the forwards, so they can go out and do their magic. Well, as as the color commentator, I was there just to try to give Al a little bit of confidence for him to do his magic. And uh, and of course, you know, he he knows the game, the rhythms, and and why his voice matters to a game. It's like the soundtrack in, in a movie. I mean, it 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 generates that enhanced emotion. And Al completely got it. Wow, yeah. I mean, you're you're a very kind partner, and I really appreciate so much what what you've just said. And and you know, it's a mutual admiration society. I could not have worked with anybody better than Ken. He got it down to eight seconds. He did. He explained <laughs> it. And do I have time to tell one small story? <laughs> yes, about real quick, because then because Jim Craig's on hold, and we got to get to him. <laughs> Ken Dryden and Art Kaminsky are next door to me, Art being the agent who never wanted to look a hotel bill in the eye. And <laughs> Kaminsky brought a table hockey game, you know, with the, the push and pull rods and the goalie goes back and forth. And we played that like an hour a day. And here's Ken Dryden, erudite, uh, scholarly, teaching me about international hockey. How did he play that table hockey game? He's jamming the rods in. He's trying to knock my guy. I said, I said you explain to me how beautiful this is. You're just a goon. You, you're playing muck muck hockey, and he just laughed at me. Al, oh God, the, we had some one fun. One thing Al never learned is Al, it's about winning. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Ken, thanks for calling in. This was awesome. We really appreciate it. Uh, well, good talking with both of you. Thank you. It's Ken Take Dryden, care, Hall of Fame. Ken Dryden, Hall of Famer. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.